so you're all tucked in for the night and it's a stormy night and you have your privacy curtain and no lights coming in no one knows you're here but you're here and you're watching your favorite episode of Netflix on your iPad but you hear a noise outside you wonder what it is but you don't want to look you don't want to open the curtain so you come over and you turn on your wireless surveillance system and instantly you can see what's going on outside so I'm going to show you today how I put together this surveillance system. This is version 2.0. I did another um, video on my first iteration, which was a Gears 360 camera, which was cool, but my camera died. So I've engineered a new system. I'm going to show you all about it. 5.8 gigahertz is a great frequency to work in since it's popular with the hobbyist radio control drones. Chances are if you have a drone and you have several other ones, you've got a lot of these parts sitting around already. So first part this is a monitor this this is going to have a the, the receiver built in the 5.8 g receiver built in this one is battery powered which i'd recommend this one has an auto search feature which most of them do and you're going to want one that has the channel manual channel up and down that way you can switch between multiple cameras now this is a super small one and it's got very low resolution a little switch so you can see the resolution here is only 480 by 272. So as you're designing your system, you're gonna to wanna to decide, do I wanna do high resolution or I wanna go cheap or midline? The 1080p stuff is still out of reach, I think, price-wise, but the 720 has gotten very affordable. So things to consider are, what do you want the resolution? The, the, the one that I have is here, but what I'd like to do is design one here. So I'm gonna look at buying a different one with better resolution and actually a seven inch bigger screen. Um, so make sure, you know, it has plenty of channel, channels. I think 40 is plenty. Um, some of them don't have a battery, so be careful. Some of the cheaper ones won't come with a built-in battery. I like to be able to recharge it and run it off the USB, and that's the next thing, is how is it, is it powered? Now, most of them will charge off like an Android or a USB charger. It'll come with the charger, and you can run it off the power and the battery. Some of them are powered by 12 volts with a plug-in 110 you could still adapt that because you have 12 volts in the car but it's a little more work to do that so next thing to consider then is the camera and camera prices are all over the place i like this guy here um you can get a little 5.8 g camera for 10 bucks but it's going to be very low resolution and have the cheaper antenna i like the mushroom style antenna this is multi-directional I think it gets much better reception. But since we're gonna be in a close proximity, it doesn't really matter um, unless you're going to take your monitor outside of the car. So this one is 800 TV lines. So that's gonna be fine if I get a monitor up to 800 by 600. Um, now this one, um, this is the transmission power. And this one's adjustable from 25 to 200. That's more, way more than you're going to need. The 25 is plenty for close proximity. Now, if you went with the 200 millivolts and you wanted to take your monitor, let's say 1,000 feet away, maybe 1,500 feet away or so, in line of sight outside, then the 200 might be interesting to you. But I find when you set it in the 200 setting, the unit gets warm and sometimes kind of hot. So for my purpose today, I'm just going to leave it on the 25 milliwatt setting. Some of them won't be adjustable. Cheaper ones aren't. And I talk about the antenna, and again, it's going to be channel adjustable. And how you adjust these little guys, each one is going to come with a set of instructions. But see, this is an all-in-one unit, which you want. This is the camera and the transmitter. On the back here, you're going to have some, they'll be different things. I like this one because it's got a nice big display. But there's a button on the top, and based on how you push the button, what sequence and what displays, it'll change the frequency, and this one will change the power. And so what I've done here, just for testing purposes today, I've cut off the connector that was on there and put one that'll just connect to a little battery I have so we can do a quick little demonstration here. Another thing to check is to find out what voltage your camera runs on. They're usually pretty wide ranging. For example, um, this one, this one's by Google RC, and I believe it runs anything from three volts to six volts or so, which is great because we're gonna be going off the USB plug which will give us the right voltage so this one right now is flashing what band it's on what frequency it's on and then that little bar is saying that it's on the lowest power setting but they're going to vary okay so i've already done the auto scan on this so it's saved the frequency so i'm just going to go on the back here 
turn it on and it should pop up right there and there we have our picture but here's our camera and there's the picture that it's taking let's go over some options for the camera this one is the Eashine EF01 it's 40 channels it's set at 25 milliwatts which is plenty it's got the 800 TV lines and it's got a nice case around it and it's twenty three dollars this next one is the one that, that I've ordered and it's an unbranded one and I have it coming and it's 72 channels and I got this one because it's got the adjustable 2550 200 milliwatts I really don't think I'm ever going to use that but at least I've got it so that's twenty seven dollars so the cameras aren't too bad where you're going to get into a bit more money and cost is going to be the monitor if you want to go with this one this is an MJX which I think looks pretty good it's a small monitor 4.3 inch but it is high def at 720p it's fifty three dollars it has a battery but what I like about it is it runs on USB it looked at basically what I can tell is only the, the, the small 4.3 4 inch ones will run on USB so this would be simp super simple easy you'll just plug it into a USB port and you're good to go so that's a great one now if you want to go to a 5 or 7 inch you're gonna to have to deal with a different type of power system so this is the Eashine LCD 5802S it's a 7 inch monitor $90 720p but it comes with a 110 volt plug which then converts down to 12 volt DC so your options are to plug it into your inverter and charge it up and use it or you could cut off the cord and you could splice in a cigarette lighter plug to the 12 volt um, cord which is what I'm going to do uh, I don't recommend that but it's a possibility um, so those are some options for the monitors and you can you can go up from there you can spend 100 200 um, whatever you want to do but I think the $53 one actually for a Prius would be just fine so here's my wiring plan so I only have one camera right now but I want to be able to do more cameras so this will be the front camera now it's wireless to the transmitter but we still have to give it power so I'm gonna run a very small wires it has to be a double wire very small pair of wires along the trim and going back to my USB switcher so that I'll be able to switch all my cameras on at once and then in the back I'll add a second camera and going back in there probably going into the same plug now here is the monitor I'm with the monitor so when I'm laying in bed I can look at the monitor and again there's its antenna it's wireless but it still needs power you could charge it up and then just turn it on when you want to look you don't have to do this but this particular one can be charged with a Android USB one so I can run that into the USB as well so I can have it all powered off that so the next step was to come up with just a way to to tie it into the USB so I just happen to have um, a USB splitter that I wasn't using and so I chopped one end off and I thought there were more wires in a USB but maybe mine's an older one, I'm not an expert on this. But um, I open it up and there's just the positive and the negative. And I'm gonna check it with my trusty uh, voltmeter so that we don't mess it up. And so what I'll end up doing is just wiring the camera into the USB. So I know on this one that the red is positive and the black is negative. So there'll be a long wire in between these two but it'll be the camera going into a long wire coming back into here plug it into my USB switch and I'll spill that will that will take power to this and then the switch will also I'll have a different USB plug to a Android type USB cable and that will automatically get my monitor I need to do just a couple corrections <clears throat> I know I made a little mistake so the camera transmits um, 25 to 200 not millivolts not milliamps but milliwatts um, and the next step up in the monitor from 40 to 72 that I've seen and the one I'm kind of looking at is 800 by 480 not 800 by 600 I did check the voltage of this USB and the green is the ground the red is the plus 5 and then the nice people at Home Depot helped me pick out this wire I was going to use telephone wire and that would work fine um, but they had showed me this is actually shielded wire and so it's two, it's got two strand in here 
I want to make the holder for the camera, and I always like working with these. They tuck in nicely, but since this is going to be near the windshield and near glass, I am going to put electrical tape over it, and there's no real good way, no good attachment points on these, but the way they're generally mounted on the quadcopters is just with a rubber band. So I've covered the bracket with the electrical tape, poked a little hole and put a rubber band through, and then I've just rubber band this on and let that little LED stick out. I'll probably end up having to cover that because it'll be pretty bright at night. And I, what I want to do is try to find a way to attach this to the rear view mirror so that that'll give me some flexibility for movement too. What I found is this little tab that you use when there's somebody having bright lights behind you, if you flip it back, that little angle iron fits on there real well. So I rubber band it and I taped it. All right, so it doesn't look too bad. It looks like just maybe something's hanging off there until you really zoom in there. So the wire goes up into the headliner. I pulled back the headliner, which was pretty easy to do. And then it runs down along the trim piece here. And then when it gets here, just tucked it down in here and ran it back under there behind the trim piece, tucked it under here under the trim piece, and then it runs to the back. So the wire comes up from under here, and I bought 20 feet, and I use at least 15, so you always get extra. And I put it into this plug here. So this will be the one that turns on my cameras. And then just temporarily, I've got this plugged in to recharge the monitor here. So let's flip on the switch right here and get power to the camera. There it is. And the picture's not bad, and it's not super wide angle, so I think I will maybe add one in the back and eventually maybe one on each side, and I can flip through them. So here's the channel up and channel down where I'd go to another one. This monitor, you can also adjust some things. That'll tell you the battery status. You can adjust the brightness and the contrast, too. All right, I found a great place for my monitor. It's right over the bed. And what I did is I just, um, it came with this spring clip for the monitor. And so I just put a zip tie in it, put in a little piece of angle metal and tucked it into the trim there. And so now I can rotate it like this. It's, it's not fixed in there. It's just tension. And so when I'm sitting on the bed, when I'm laying on the bed, I can turn it this way. When I'm sitting over here in the chair, I can swivel it over that way. All right, it's time to do the Walmart test. We're here in Walmart. Actually, it's, the sun is going down. It's getting late in the day. And so here's our little monitor over here. So let's say you want to go into the coffee shop or you're just not sure about your car. You could use this monitor. All right. So I'm just going to walk. All right, that's me. <laughs> now, one thing I'm going to show you that I may just have to get. Since it's 5.8G, they actually make a couple wrist watches with two inch screen so you could put the wristwatch on your arm and and, it, and if you're inside sleeping and you hear something you can just turn on the wristwatch check your channels and have it right there or it'll be right on your wrist they're kind of big and bulky and crazy but um i may have to get one they're so cool all right i'm all the way at the other side of the parking lot and i still got a good signal Let's see if we can see the car where'd the car go it's way over there behind that it's way, way back there where that white car just went. All right, so really good distance. Got a little break up. I think that's really cool. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I did. I think I got a good system. And I'm just going to stick around with this little monitor and keep trying it out. I may just go with that. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.